I was raised and reared right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my family comes from New York. They were in the garment business. Uh, came to Atlanta via Chicago, Illinois, where I was born. Uh, my folks and my mother worked in the business as well. Had the first integrated garment factory anywhere in the Southeast United States. And I worked in the factory for many, many years. It eventually moved to Greenville, Georgia in Meriwether County. And uh, we grew up here in Atlanta. And I went to public school here in Atlanta. Did my undergraduate work at Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. And I received my uh, law degree at the University of Georgia in Athens. Originally, I thought about serving in the legislature until I attended my first Horace Sibley lecture at the University of Georgia. I heard a speech from Judge Herman Wazanski, the senior judge from the District of Massachusetts, and he talked about how a judge could make a difference in one person's life. He was the judge that sentenced Ray Charles to rehabilitation, the first federal judge ever to do that with a defendant charged with a serious drug offense, and it changed and saved Ray Charles' life. In fact, the speech is right here in the Georgia Law Review, and the light went off, and I decided I wanted to be a judge. I started my legal career as an attorney for the Georgia General Assembly in the Legislative Counsel's Office, left to start a private practice in 1977, but came back and served for two years as Zell Miller's legal aide when he was Lieutenant Governor of Georgia. Uh, my practice went full-time right thereafter for 25 years. I began my career on the bench when I was appointed by Mayor Andy Young as a citizen member of the Taxi Cab Review Panel. Later, he appointed me as a part-time judge to the old city court, the Traffic Court of Atlanta. And I also was appointed as a part-time or pro-hack judge to the Municipal Court. Uh, Mayor Campbell appointed me full-time to the city traffic court and I was appointed full-time to the Municipal Court by Mayor Franklin. It took me many times before various judicial nominating commissions to finally get uh, to the short list to be appointed. And it was a tough experience, but if you don't give up, you can eventually reach your goal. And I'm now in my 16th year as a judge of the Atlanta Municipal Court, and I've been re-elected, I think three or four times with somewhere close to 80% of the vote. So you can't please everyone, but you can continue to try to do as best as you can. I'm talking to drive, sir. My dad. Take him out to dinner. Oh. We taught you to wear a seatbelt. Take him out to dinner. Seatbelt saved your life. Would you believe this, Darrow? You are the 15th person this month alone. You totaled out, walked out without a scratch. Congratulations. Thank you. That's all right. Last month we had 38 last year. 643 in this one room alone. There are cities in Georgia that don't have that many people. I'm a sick belt survivor as well. We keep church and state separate in this country, sir, but I preach the gospel of sick belts. Ms. Child, I will be back later this afternoon. Okay. State Capitol building. We're actually going to the Paul Coverdale Legislative Office building in hearing room 403, instead of going back to where my legal career began as an attorney for the General Assembly, the ultimate general practitioner with 180 representatives and 56 senators. As an assistant in the Office of Legislative Counsel, you had 236 clients, and they would ask you to write all sorts of laws. The first law I ever wrote with the law to eliminate the excise tax on lightning rods. And then a representative came in and asked me to write a law to eliminate Saturday night specials based on the melting point of those weapons. And then a senator came in from DeKalb County, wanted me to write a law that a punishment for rape, all convicted defendants would be castrated. I didn't pass on the constitutionality of any or all of those laws, but as a lawyer, my job was to write the statute. So this is what we did. And uh, so when I come to this building, I have very, very, very uh, long memories. Administrative Office of the Courts, always for all classes of court, they do a little video called A Day in the Life. 
and they just follow a judge from place to place to see what's going on. I had a fellow charged with uh, impeding the flow of traffic, routine case. You know why he stopped on the side of the road? To make a deal to buy heroin. And we put him in, a, he put himself in a facility in Waycross, and from what I know, yeah. he's going to be okay. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we're looking at trying to make mini courts accountability courts. We're talking about the elephant right now. The elephant, right? yeah. Which, it's an opiate. It's just, it's used literally in those little guns to tranquilize an elephant. And people think they're going to live after they take this? Yeah. Well, they don't, see, the thing is, they don't know. It's because they're buying it off of the street. So they're pressing it into pills and they're selling it as Oxycontin, or they're um, mixing, it in, mixing it in heroin to be a stronger high. But I mean, it's not, a, it just kills people. I mean, there are 189 overdoses in Cincinnati in less than a week. I think it was like four or five days. I'm gonna show you how you use this. Five, four, three, it's the two, one. Mm -hmm. That's it, it walks you through it. They have this for my security where they can watch everything and then they can run up to any courtroom yeah. within yeah. however many seconds it takes or minutes and, and hit them. But your partner's related to I'm Mel Ott, the baseball player. player. <laughs> Mel Lincoln. <laughs>